Hey, I'm Chris Cooney. I'm with the Metro South Chamber of Commerce, like you, working from home still. This is week four. This is our fourth installment of this update from uh, city, state, and uh, federal uh, resources. I um, want to uh, first let you know that we will re be receiving updates, and I'll give you some numbers in terms of approved loans and whatnot. Uh, this session is going to be recorded and posted. Uh, on the Chamber's website, the COVID Recovery website, which is at metrosouthchamber.com. There's a lot of great information on that site regarding the latest information uh, with uh, grants and uh, loans and various uh, health advisories and whatnot. Um, there'll also be additional information as we go and, and as we ramp up uh, into re returning to work. So there's some great uh, articles and programs uh, that are being uh, put out that we're posting for suggestions on how to get back to work. Uh, and I know we're all looking forward to that after we deal with uh, what's in front of us. So I um, want to also let you know that we're happy to have partners in promoting this. I'm just going to run down the list of folks that have hel uh, helped uh, us promote this program and our affiliates. So the Avon Industrial Park Association, the Bridgewater Business Association, the Brockton Area NAACP, the Cape Verdean Association, the Campello Business Association, the Eastern Chamber of Commerce, the East Bridgewater Business Association, Haitians United, as well as the Montello Business Association, the Norwell Chamber of Commerce, Pembroke Chamber of Commerce, Randolph Chamber of Commerce, the South Shore Women's Business Network, and the Stoughton Chamber of Commerce. So I wanna thank all of them for helping us promote this and also many of them for being affiliates of the Metro South Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we will have a, a Q&A at the end. Uh, we invite you to write your questions down in the lower uh, section. It says Q&A, just write your questions in there. Our panelists can see those questions. We've asked each of our panelists to address those questions as they go and we will uh, make all of that information available at the end. You'll receive a uh, response from us after the call is over with additional information and where you can find the recording of this call in case you want to go back and uh, listen to any of the information presented. We've got a great program. It's very varied. Uh, we've got information uh, again from the city, state, and some national resources including uh, some rent relief and mortgage relief programs that are relatively new and a program from Verizon and the U.S. Chamber. So without further ado, I know the mayor has been very busy over these last few months uh, in ramping up for this. Uh, mayor, I, I'm not gonna, uh, I guess, get into your whole bio again, but I know there's been a lot of developments the last 24 hours, and I know you have to run to another meeting after this, so you're just gonna be on for the intro. But uh, can you fill us in on, on uh, your press conference yesterday and, and what the latest is? Yeah, first of all, Chris, I want to thank you and the Metro South and, of course, our friends at SBA and all our partners that have uh, supported this. As the mayor of the city of Brockton, this is the fourth week, and uh, we're just getting such positive uh, response here in my office. The information you're sharing is, is extremely vital as, as we move through this pandemic. And, of course, as the mayor of the city of Brockton uh, and as a lifelong Brocktonian, uh, I, I, my job is, is to protect the safety of, of the people that I serve, the residents of the city of Brockton. Uh, I did file and sign an executive order uh, yesterday, which goes into effect today, uh, which is uh, April 17th, Friday at 9 p.m. There is a curfew. It's a mandatory cur curfew in the city of Brockton from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. Um, it's, it's really done out of abundance of caution. We've seen a drastic spike in the increase. We lost seven more residents yesterday. Brings our total loss of life of 46 residents in the city of Brockton have passed away because of COVID. Since March 1st, we've had over 1,200 positive confirmed cases of Brockton residents coming down with this virus. As I speak to you right now, there's 825 residents with current active cases. Uh, it's a scary time. Um, most uh, Brocktonians uh, that live here or work here are, are adhering to the standards set forth by the healthcare professionals. But there is a small percentage of folks that are not. I've had Brockton PD, Chris, and you and I have talked about this. I've had them to usher people out of uh, social distancing where they're uh, congregating in parking lots and, and car washes and jumping the fence to go play golf. Those days are gone. Um, this curfew, again, some people don't like it, but quite honestly, it's done to protect people. That's my job and that's what I'm gonna do. Essential workers, of course, can continue to go to work. Uh, you know, if you wanna get takeout, don't drive to a takeout place, call and they can deliver it. 
Um, but at the end of the day, it is a, it is a curfew. It's going to be effective at 9 p.m. We did a robocall reverse 911 last night, again today, to inform. It's in social media everywhere, multiple languages. Uh, and it really, I, I mean, I didn't take this uh, willy-nilly. I, I really spent a lot of time working with our legal. Uh, it does uh, have some disruption, but it's disruption that's going to save lives. We need to make sure that uh, Brockton people are protected and safe at all times. Because at the end of the day, when we're ranked number two in the whole state of Massachusetts uh, with this COVID, something's wrong. And, uh, and we can talk about a lot of root causes, Chris, uh, but at the end of the day, as mayor, I'm going to use every tool that I can use, uh, every available means to protect uh, and serve the residents, and this is one of them. So again, um, I thank you from, uh, from a business guy myself. I have an MBA from Boston College. I've had a small business, a law office for many, many years. The information that the SBA and the Metro Cell and all the associations are sharing is extremely important. We all know, quite honestly, we're going to get through this. At some point, uh, there's going to be a, a new normal. And then at that time, when we rebound, we have to make sure that the businesses uh, are flourishing again. So thank you for what you do, Chris. You're always responsive. Thank you to Lexi and everybody on your team and staff. I want to thank the SBA. I do have to jump on another call right now. I'll be back on again. If you have this uh, next Friday, I'll be here again. So it's an honor and privilege to serve as the mayor of the city of Brockton. And uh, I want to wish you all a good weekend. And let's let's stay safe. Let's let's do it the right way. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. We will have uh, Congressman Kennedy with us next uh, Friday. So we hope you will join us. Thank you. So as you can tell, things are not uh, back to normal anywhere near. And uh, I was in the city on uh, Monday all day and although there's not many people around uh the downtown area it is essential as he says that folks need to stop congregating uh and and be uh aware that you know the quicker we can get through this the quicker we can get back to work so um speaking of that we're happy to have with us uh susan whitaker from the mass office of business development uh, Susan it was just on the call, the weekly call at one o'clock, as many of us are, uh, with Lieutenant Governor, uh, Secretary Keneally, and uh, Secretary Acosta. That's both for economic development and uh, workforce. Uh, hi, Susan. How are you? And uh, welcome back. Can you give us an update on, on what you, you just learned and, and where we're at with uh, the various uh, pieces? I can. I can give you the update. Thank you very much for having me on today's webinar. Um, so the Lieutenant Governor was not on the call today. She was um, just not able to attend. So we did hear from Secretary Keneally and um, the update as you probably are well aware is that the SBA has run out of funding for the um, emergency injury uh, loans as well as the PPP loans. Um, they are they have received, it's the understanding is there's been over 27,000 PPP loans approved in Massachusetts. So um, I guess that's the good news. I mean, it was only, they were only out for about two weeks. Um, and there's hope that there will be more funding coming for this, although we don't have any confirmation on that at this point. Um, however, they did share that Mass Growth Capital Corporation had instituted a technical assistance program for folks with PPP so that I just want to make individuals aware of this program. So if funding does come out again for PPP, they are aware that this is out there. So it's um, on their website. It's um, www.empoweringsmallbusiness.org. And they have a um, multilingual translation services because the application for PPP was in English and they were able to provide translation services. So um, this is a little bit too late for this <laughs> to be shared, but just in the event that this does change and there is more funding, I just wanted to let people know that that's a resource for them. Um, other updates. We, um, uh, I'm Governor, can I ask you a question on that, Susan? The, the, the technical assistance money from Mass Growth Capital uh, for the PPP, is that to help people apply for the PPP? It is. Okay. Yeah, it's to help. It's to help. It's, so it's a, it's a it's a variety of different um, individuals, organizations who are helping with this technical assistance. It's through Mass Growth Capital, um, and so it's to help with that application process specifically. Okay. So you know, the problem is they had launched it. I think some people were able to take advantage of it, but the question is, you know. The hope is that there will be more funding for PPP. 
So I, I just think it's, it's worthy. I'll put it in the chat box, the information, so that I think it's worthy to have that out there because should this, should the PPP funding come out again, you know, we want folks to be able to leverage that as quickly as possible. And we certainly don't want the language barrier to be an issue to stop them. So yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Having this information uh, beforehand will be helpful. So, so I'll get that out there. Yeah, that's great. Just to be clear that, uh, you know, many businesses have applied for PPP and EIDL, uh, but there are many companies that just were either slow to pick it up or they were doing crisis management with their own staff and whatnot. Um, this Massachusetts growth capital will allow them assistance to apply for the grant itself, right? They don't have to apply for the assistance. They just will call or, or access your, the website you're going to put up there and they'll get yeah. help so, in filling out the application. Right. So the, the issue, I mean, for now, there are, there's no money left in the fund. So people right. can't apply now. We're hopeful that next week the Congress will be able right. to extend. Yeah. Right. Hopefully, if that's the case, then this is a place for them to receive technical assistance to okay. get that application. Well, the application. Right. Okay. Exactly. So I'll get that information up there. Right. Um, other information um, is about the organization. Um, the Commonwealth has partnered with Mass uh, Tech Collaborative and the Mass Manufacturing Extension Partnership, or Mass MEP, um, and they have created a Manufacturing Emergency Response Team, or MERT, to assist manufacturers interested in transitioning their production lines for PPP, PPE. And I can put that information in the chat window as well. There's actual Great funding and grants. They put about $10 million into this to help manufacturers to be able to pivot to okay. help in this effort. Um, and there's also a portal for companies who want to either donate or sell PPE. And that's some information I can put in there as well. Um, there have been some significant updates to, um, to unemployment um, insurance claims. So we're getting a lot of questions on that right now. Yeah. So there are there were over 517,000 claims uh, in the last four weeks. And to put that in perspective, there were only 17,000 claims in September. So in September, in February, in the month of February. So you've had over 500,000 more claims now than you did in the month of, in March than you did in the month of February. Wow. So um, the team, there were 50 people on staff and they have now ramped up to 850. So those people were actually brought on board and trained remotely and are now deployed. They have reopened the call-in um, centers. The call center has now been reopened. So we have the phone number there and I can give it to people now and then I'll put it in the chat window as well. It's 877-626-6800. Secretary Acosta did emphasize that the best way to open your claim is still to go on to the website and utilize the website versus the call-in number, but you can use the call-in number and you can also reach out and request that someone call you. Okay. Um, the claimants have been receiving those, that $600, that $600 check has been going out. They, those payments started, were issued last week. Um, the question came up that some people have received the $600, but haven't received the the um, the back payments and she said that some people have been forgetting that one of the bigger issues is that people who've never filed for unemployment before don't realize that they have to recertify week after week and that you you don't just file for unemployment once and then expect that those checks continuously come that you have to actually file every single week to to say I'm still out of work, I'm still looking for you know still looking for a job, and I need to file for unemployment. So that's essential. They're they're trying to get that word out to folks to make sure that they are filing every week because that may be why folks aren't continuing to receive their their checks. Um, the other piece is they are already in a beta phase right now for those pandemic UI claimants, who those are the self-employed, the 1099 individuals. Mm -hmm. who don't, would not normally be eligible for unemployment, but under the CARES Act would be. Those individuals, um, they had been waiting, initially there was a, a delay because we'd been waiting to hear from getting guidance from the federal government on how to, how to institute that. And then once they'd received the guidance, they had to build a whole platform to integrate it into the state system. So that state system is now in a beta test 
and they had publicly issued that those claimants will be able to apply by the end of the month, by April 30th, and they are hopeful that they will be able to potentially beat that date. So um, they also said that they are hoping to get some information for those claimants as to what kind of documentation they will need, you know, as far as pay, you know, they won't have particularly pay stubs like, like other individuals will. So what kind of documentation they're gonna need for, to file their claim. They're hoping to have that information up on their website, maybe as early as Sunday. So okay. that information is there. And then they've also let us know that they have finally received guidance for those individuals who have exhausted their unemployment claims and that they are now taking that guidance and looking to build that program out. So those individuals will be addressed next. So um, that's still a wait and see when that's gonna happen. They don't have a date yet for those individuals, but they at least have received the guidance now and are working on that pro program next. So that's the update for the unemployment insurance folks. And I'm trying to think what else we had, if there was anything else we had to give you the update with. So that's some good news. The mayor had some bad news. You had some good news. Uh, oh, there is some other good news yeah. on the unemployment front. Forgive me, I just realized. They offered a platform in Spanish that is also a mobile friendly platform. So individuals who don't have computers can also use their um, telephones, their mobile phones to apply for un unemployment insurance with their phone in Spanish. And they are actually in the process of offering that in Portuguese and Chinese as well. So that, that will be coming soon too. So those are my updates. Okay. So uh, that, that language issue has been one that's been ongoing and I'm glad to hear that they're addressing it. I'm also glad to hear that they have 700 people now uh, answering the phones uh, because we heard two weeks ago that there were no phone calls being uh, answered. So uh, I, we are hearing also that some of the new employees aren't, don't have access to the past W-2s. So in several instances, people have been asked to print out their last year's worth of W-2s and send, uh, or uh, I'm sorry, their payroll stubs, uh, weekly payroll stubs, and send them in uh, physically to the office. Is that something you can check out? And, and I will check that out and get back to you on that. I hadn't heard that myself, but I will. Well, it, it's it's interesting because you have you have brought on, you went from 50 to 850, and you had to bring all these people on board while under this pandemic. So they were all trained remotely as well. So it may be a systematic thing, I don't know, but I will look into that. So they may not have access to the database. And right, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure, but I will, I will ask that question and get back to you on that. All right, thanks. We also had a call about a debt, they're issuing $600 debit cards, is that part of the beta? Yes, that they, they can receive that in, in their check or in a debit card. I believe that's the other way, the other way that they are dispersing the funds. So we've got somebody who is uh, a self-employed and they're receiving the debit cards, maybe because they did not have the bank accounts set up. I don't know. But so those, those are hitting right now from what we're being told. Yes, they are. They should be, they should be receiving those. And, and the other thing is if, if you hadn't gotten, I think if anyone is having problems with unemployment, you can actually have them reach out to me directly. I can do my best to help help with any unemployment issues as well. So we have mostly employers on this call and some are asking, uh, they're anticipating calling employees back, but they're, they're worried the employee is not gonna come back because they're getting the $600 debit card or the $600 uh, sweetener. Um, are they supposed to report these people, uh, these employees uh, so that they can, because they're gonna need these workers back. Right. Well, it's my understanding that that they are required by law that if they are to if they have they are, they're asked on their weekly when they apply for unemployment insurance they're asked were you eligible for work did you were you offered employment and if they were offered their job back they are, are required and under the rights of perjury to, to say yes, they were offered their job back. And if they were offered their job back and they decline that job, then they may no longer be eligible for unemployment. Now, it may be because, because of the COVID-19, there may be outstanding issues related to that. So that may come into play where I don't feel safe coming to work or there may be other outstanding issues with health-related incidences that could 
prevent that from stopping them from being unable to claim, being able to continue to claim a benefit. But businesses may contact unemployment and let them know that they did offer their a job back to their to their employee. They may they may absolutely do that. Okay, so, that's great to know because it's it is a conundrum. Yeah, you know, that some folks are earning more money unemployed than they were um, employed at, right. this, at this stage until July 31st, until that money runs out. Okay. Yeah. Well, Susan, thank you as always uh, for maintaining the communication, bringing us great information. We appreciate that. Um, and, I'm and very grateful to you and your team, to Lexi and Emma and the rest of your staff. Thank you very much for having us here. Thank you. I know Margaret's not able to make it uh, now, but I think she's going to be on for the Q&A at the end. So uh, we will introduce her at that point. We're going to move on now. Uh, we had, you know, Bob Nelson, who was supposed to be on this call. He reached out to me yesterday morning to tell me some good news and some bad news. Uh, the bad news is they put basically a hold on all public appearances for the SBA throughout the United States for all of yesterday and all of today. So that's why he's not with us. However, uh, he did let me know that um, as of yesterday morning, 30,000 businesses in Massachusetts had their applications approved for either EIDL or PPP, and that the total amount committed to that point before they ran out of money a couple hours after uh, was $9 billion for Massachusetts businesses. And some of that money is hitting now uh, in the form of deposits and advances. Uh, but, you know, there's also other loan programs that have been with us for years and, you know, having uh, have served on the Seed Corporation board since probably 1992. Uh, I, I'm, I've been aware of these and we promoted them extensively. Uh, these are loans that are federally backed SBA loans in many cases, administered locally through this economic development agency called Seed Corporation, which is located in Taunton, but services all of southeastern Massachusetts, including the city of Brockton and the surrounding towns. And uh, we're delighted to have uh, not one, but two uh, people with us from Seed uh, today. Uh, I'm going to introduce Angie, uh, and then uh, Lisa Holmes is with us as well. Uh, both uh, have worked, you know, extensively with small businesses. Um, so let me introduce... Um, Angie, Angie's going to talk a little bit about uh, the 504, 7A loans that uh, are available still through uh, SBA and through Seed Corporation. So um, Angie's been with Seed since 2011, and uh, she is a loan officer. Uh, she helps with underwriting uh, Seed Small Loans and SBA Community Advantage Program, of which Brockton has dedicated funds, and I think she's going to touch on that as well. She holds a bachelor's degree in marketing from the University of Tampa. I'm not going to ask you why you decided to come to this cold region uh, from Florida. But, um, and she has a, uh, completed a risk management associate's uh, commercial credit for lending training uh, not long ago. And I understand that uh, you have a due date that's coming up soon. <laughs> Tomorrow. <Welcome. laughs> how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Good, thank you for having us. So, um, Can you turn so your volume up just a little bit? Sure, yeah. Okay, great, thank you. And Lisa's been with uh, Seed for many uh, years and uh, has done some of the larger uh, companies too. So I think she's gonna chime in uh, towards the end once Angie's presented. Is this any better? Yeah, I've turned up my volume. Folks might have to turn up their volume a little bit. I can hear. It's not allowing me to turn it up on my end. There it is. There it is. Oh. That was a little better. Come on. It's, it's back down. Well, I, I, can, I can, I turned my volume up. So folks might have to turn the volume up a little bit. All right, well, I'll try to talk. I'll try to talk loud anyway. Okay. Um, So uh, I want to start off by, you know, I'm going to go through our loan programs. I know um, that we've touched on a little bit about the status of the PPP loan and the EIDL loan through SBA, which we're not directly lending. And we've been referring most of our, you know, people reaching out who are looking for funding for disaster relief to these programs. 
Um, so unfortunately, you know, getting the news yesterday that the programs had shut down, you know, it puts everyone in a tough situation because there's not a lot of disaster relief loans out there. And we're not really lending on disaster loan uh, relief right now. We have our normal programs that I'll go through. Um, but yes, they are on hold as of now. Uh, just a couple of talking points for the PPP loan for those who, if they do have additional funding, um, we've been told, you know, really a lot of the feedback we're getting from the banks is if you're going to apply, so if you're going to work on putting those applications together and the chance there will be additional funding, I would suggest reaching out to the local bank or credit union that you have an existing relationship with. They are most likely to be the ones that are going to work with you. There's not a lot of lending institutions that are fielding applications for new customers, unfortunately. So that's just a helpful hint that I've gotten from feedback from a lot of the lending institutions that we're working with. So stick with your local commercial banker that you have a relationship with. Yep. So um, for those who have, I, so I've received some Q&A that I know we'll go over after. I don't know if they're going to everyone or if they're directly to me. Um, but in terms of people who have already submitted applications, um, from what I understand, they're the ones that have been submitted, they're still being processed on a first come first serve basis. Um, you can uh, talk to your local lender if you've applied through a bank to get a status update. And then if you've applied through the SBA idle loans, I do have contact information to reach out to them to be able to obtain a status update. We unfortunately don't have the ability to um, access that information. So I can give that phone number now. Um, so if you've applied for the idle loan through SBA, um, the phone number to obtain, hopefully you can get somebody on the phone to provide some status update for you is 1-800-659-2955. And you could also email disastercustomerservice at sba.gov. That'll give you some, that, that might be able to provide you some updates on where your loan is. Right. So some people applied, you know, way back. Some people applied through the new application. Um, I know that people are just starting to hear back within the last few days or last week or so. Um, so hopefully those that have been submitted are still being considered. That's the understanding that I have. They're just not accepting new applications right now. Okay. Um, and then in addition to that, um, I guess an alternative item that I'll get into as well. We received a notification, Chris, and I don't know if you've heard about this yet, but um, there's an organization, it's Save Small Business Fund. It's a grant making initiative. Um, they're con they have contributions from corporate and philanthropic partners where they're providing $5,000 grants and those loan applications will open up and go live on Monday the 20th at 12 p.m. Yes, yeah, so we actually have someone, we have Steve McAllister from the Rhode Island office of the United States Chamber of Commerce. He's going to, he's on with us right now. So he's going to talk a little bit more about that. Perfect. All right. So I just wanted to mention that because we saw a notification about that and it looks, you know, I checked out the website. It looks like you can go on and find out if your business would be eligible depending on the type of business and location. Um, right. But I'll let him take that if he's going to talk about that. Um, for, for those clients on here who have existing loans with, you know, whether it's a bank or credit union or a CDC like Seed Corporation, you can always reach out to your lender and ask about deferment options or payment relief, whether it's SBA funding or not. Most institutions are offering that, so it's always worth reaching out to your lender just to see what they can do, if they can offer interest only or payment relief or how their process is working. So a lot of people have uh, reached out to us at SEED, um, whether, again, whether it's SBA funds or not. Um, in addition to that, uh, we have received notification as of a couple weeks ago that all of the SBA programs, if you do have an SBA loan, whether it's an SBA micro loan or an SBA 504 loan or 7A loan, um, that the SBA is actually paying those payments, principal and interest for the next six months. So from April through September, those loans are being forgiven. So if you're unsure exactly what funding you've received, but you do have a loan with an existing lending institution, I would reach out to them. Um, most of those payments should have been in place already, but you should see that the payments have not been withdrawn from your account. Um, so if you have any questions on that, sometimes you'll get a loan and you don't really know where it came from, reach out to your lender and they should be able to answer that for you. 
um, but um, that also goes for any new loans being made through the SBA, um, microloans 504 and 7A as well um, through September. That is terrific. And uh, do they have to do anything to get that benefit? Or, you know, I've talked to a manufacturer in Brockton who said that it just happened. He actually checked his account and the money wasn't coming out and that allowed him to have some cash flow that he wasn't expecting. Okay. And as of, so it was as of um, April 1st, that payment should not have been withdrawn from their account automatically Okay. Um, for the 504 loans. And then the lending institutions were putting it into place for their microloan program um, as well. So any of the 7A and 504 loans, it should have automatically stopped being taken um, as of April 1st. And so people on this call might be go, they might, might be disappointed that they haven't already applied for these uh, loans, but you're about to tell us that even if they apply now, the first six months could be paid for, correct? Correct. So um, it, it will go through anything that's been funded or closed through September. So the the biggest thing that we're seeing is, you know, we do have our loan funds. Unfortunately, you know, we're an economic development organization, so we weren't provided that uh, disaster relief funding to be able to have additional funding and, you know, on top of our normal funding uh, guidelines and programs to be able to make the disaster loans. And that's why we've been referring to those, to their lending institution for PPP and for the idle loans for SBA because the interest rates are better, it's long-term. There's no payment for 12 months for the idle loans. Really, you can't get much better that, than that for a uh, small business loan. But we do have funding available and really we're going through to see, you know, we have clients that um, are reaching out, asking about our working capital loans. We do have funds available specifically for Brockton businesses um, that follow the typical small loan guidelines. They're at 6% interest rate in a six year term, well up to a six year term. No prepayment penalty, can go anywhere from 1,000 to 50,000 um, through the microloan program. But we have to follow our same guidelines. So the business would have to qualify depending on you know going through our normal guidelines in terms of credit um, being able to show repayment as of the end of the, uh, 2019 and also on the interim. And a lot of businesses are shut down. So we are finding that some businesses may not qualify because they've been affected so negatively by, um, by COVID, unfortunately. But if other funding is not obtained and you're looking for working capital, it's something we could potentially entertain. I know it's a little bit difficult to lend right now, but we would have to see that it follows our normal guidelines. And just because we don't have that funding, we have to be able to show that we can make repayments and get approval from our committee. Um, it's going to be a, a little bit of a different process than going through and answering a que few questions for SBA um, and going into the queue. Um, but you know, it is a great program to take advantage of if there's other needs that businesses need funding for that's maybe not related to COVID as well. Um, so it can be working capital, furniture, fixtures, equipment, refinancing business, credit card debt. Um, you know, we've had quite a few applications come in during this time. There were people that we were in process of working with prior to the whole shutdown and situation that we're in now. So it's always okay to reach out, ask questions. There's, um, we have three lenders at Seed, so myself, Lisa's on this call as well, and then we have Lori Driscoll. So if you go out to our website, www.seedcorp.com, you can get all of our contact information there. Um, and email is definitely the best way to reach us right now because we are all working remotely um, as well. So um, in addition to, I, you know, some people are still looking at purchasing real estate. I won't go into it too much, but, um, for the small business owners that are looking to buy real estate for their prod, uh, for their business, um, either the one that they're operating in or maybe a new one, we do have, we are a lender for the SBA 504 loan program. And this is for uh, to allow business owners to occupy and purchase um, the building that they're going into. So they'd have to occupy 51% or more of the space for their business. Um, it can't be necessarily strictly investment, um, but it can be a mixed use property as long as they're occupying majority of the space. Um, but rates are at historical lows right now. So they can either go into a 20 or 25 year fixed rate for our piece of the loan. Yeah. And um, right now the rates are at 3.22% for the 25 year fixed rate and 3.09% for the 20 year fixed rate. So just something to keep in mind, maybe after everything clears and they're looking to buy real estate, it's a great program. 
Um, we would always work with a bank, but it is an SBA program where the bank provides up to 50%, uh, we provide up to 40%, and the cli client can potentially come in with 10% down. And to Chris's point, Angie, uh, Chris, you mentioned about the having no payments on those closings. They are an SBA product. Um, Uncle Sam is paying the first six months of payment in order to help these businesses, even though they may be in a good position to be able to stabilize and move on past the pandemic. This is a best kept secret, really. I mean, uh, the, the manufacturer I was talking to was just shocked. He even went so far as to look at the other end of the loan to see if you guys had, or, or the, if you had, had, SBA had moved it, you know, the, the, the payoff date by six months. Yeah. Well, I'm not. Yeah. So it was really truly six months worth of uh, payments, including interest and principal. Uh, yeah. as, and that amounts to more than some of the PPP and the EIDL loans. So folks should not overlook that. And that's why we wanted to have you folks on today to talk about that. You know, you, you and I have worked together a long time, Lisa, as well. Uh, and I know that there have been creative ways to access these loans. I've, I know small businesses that have bought maybe a two family and they've operated the business out of one of the apartments and the garage, which comprised more than 51%, maybe rented out or lived in the other part of the two family while they got the business going and that qualified uh, Correct. program. Uh, and because a lot of times you have that one story, two story, and you feel like it's half and half, but I have currently a, an office building that's going to just take up one small office of the downstairs because it will help him with any ADA compliancy to be able to have access at the street level. And it gives him the 51% he needs, and yet it gives him a strong tenant on the first floor that assists him with some cash flow. So. Um, it definitely is about being creative. Angie recently had her own challenge where she's helping a client work through obtaining the right amount of square footage so that they can qualify for the program. But it is excellent. 20 and 25 year norms at just over 3% and that's fixed for the entire time. It's kind of an incredible, as you mentioned, secret product, but we'd love to get the word out there. And while they're trying times, and kind of difficult to think about a big uh, capital investment. Some people were already in that mode. And um, I know earlier uh, that Jill Beresford was saying, we will get past this and that will happen. It doesn't feel like it. Our last four weeks have been overwhelming for everybody, but, um, but it will happen. And we're happy to say we're still open and operating remotely, as Angie said, to be able to reach out to us to have a conversation. Well, CETA has been around for 30 years, and, and I know you guys are working hard. I get your emails almost every day uh, with updates, so we really appreciate that. I know you've been on all these calls for the last four weeks, and uh, we're delighted that you're filling us in. Angie, you know, we talked about this Brockton-specific product. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, where this fund's just for Brockton businesses? Sure, yeah. So all of our small loans, I mean, we're really a small shop. We don't have, you know, operate a little bit differently than the traditional banks or credit unions. And really, we're here to help when you can't get bank financing. So that's really our niche and our gap that we're trying to fill in the market. So we have small loan funds available from 1,000 to 50,000. They can go up into 250,000. But the benefit is, is you know, we have funding from a bunch of different federal and state grants and loans through SBA. But we, um, Brockton is really the only city that we have specific loan funds available to lend to Brockton-based businesses. So it's, you know, our, our normal guidelines that we're following, sometimes our interest rates are a little bit lower and we can be a little bit more flexible. Um, but it's a great program to take advantage of if you're looking for working capital, if you're looking to buy real estate, maybe if it's smaller. I, we actually just financed a business um, who was looking to purchase real estate, but it was a smaller dollar amount, um, around 300,000, where we used the Brockton Loan Funds to finance that deal in conjunction with a bank. So it gives us a little bit more flexibility on the re flexibility on the real estate, um, but allows the client to still only put down the low 10% injection. So if you do have a Brockton-based business, um, you can reach out to us and run scenarios by the best thing I would say, you know, to do is to call us. Or if you have somebody to refer out to us, the best thing we can do is have a conversation, go through the loan process, ask you questions so we can make sure you're a good fit for the program and to let you know how we would look at the program as well. Um, all of our small loans are fixed at 6%. If it's a bank participation, if we're working with a bank on that loan, um, if they can, maybe they can't provide the entire amount of financing, but they can do a, you know, a portion of it and they need a gap financer, we, our rate drops to 5% fixed. 
loans. And there's no prepayment penalty on any of our small loan programs. What was that rate that you said? It's 6% fixed if we do it on our own. And then if we work with a bank, it drops to 5% fixed. 5% for 20 years? Um, if it's for real estate, we would do a 10-year term and a 20-year amortization. So their payments would be spread out over 20 years. If it's a regular working capital loan, we'll usually do up to six years. Um, sometimes for equipment, we can extend up to 10 years, depending on the use of funds. Okay, that's, that's terrific news. Uh, Lisa, did you want to add anything before we go on to the... No, I know it's just hard to think about the new generation of stuff, but certainly um, we're here and open to trying to help folks that are trying to move on because before you know it, summer will be here. Um, we are trying to provide some guidance as SBA items come up because as you know, we're tightly affiliated with SBA and a lot of their products. So, uh, so we do tend to keep our ear to the ground on that. And um, as Susan had mentioned, you know, there is a request both by Treasury and SBA for additional appropriations for that PPP. Last week, they had that out there for $250 more billion. There was a sticking point between the parties, but it seems like as things probably get a little pressure, I'm sure that that will move beyond that. And so we're hopeful to be there. But as um, as Angie mentioned, it would be key that folks do get ready because I don't think they quite expected it to go as quickly because they said the program is till June 30th. Um, but as, as uh, Jovita had said, they did 14 years worth of lending in 14 days. I mean, Mass got those numbers you were talking about, but that volume is equivalent to 14 years worth of SBA transactions that happened in the last two weeks. So, so be ready because they're, it does anticipate to have additional funding, so. That's terrific, thank you for the update. Just wanted to add one more thing, Chris, um, on you know, anyone, again, if you have an existing loan with, you know, whether it's a bank or credit union or you know, non-traditional lender, um, always reach out to them. You know, the biggest thing I wanna drive home about pay potential payment relief, because most places are offering this in some aspect, um, even for our, you know, a seed for our non-SBA lending, um, right. We are providing payment relief with interest only for our small loans as well. So um, maybe that aren't funded through SBA. So usually there is a, a relief or some type of option on a temporary basis. Not the not the forgiveness, unfortunately, that yeah um, SBA is offering, but it will at least help get them through this period of time. Helps with the cash flow, right? And a lot of our bankers are saying, call them now. If you think you're gonna have a problem, even in September. August, September, October, call them now and they can work with you now to help uh, free up some cash flow so you don't feel so pinched. So please yeah, do that, folks. Right um, I'm going to jump over to Steve McAllister from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, who's uh, calling in from the uh, Providence office. Steve, are you able to jump on with us? Yes. Hey, Chris, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Can you go. give us a little update on this loan, this $5,000 that uh, the U.S. Chamber is putting out their application on Monday, I think, right? Sure, yes. So this is a, a, a program that is coming. It's not a government program. This is something that uh, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the foundation that we have, so it's uh, the part of the U.S. Chamber, our foundation, um, combined with a number of our members who reached out to us, they want to help businesses. It's business-to-business help. So um, if you want to go to savesmallbusiness.com, and this is a $5,000 one-time grant um, that you can apply for, and I'll give you the, the provisions who can apply for this. It is uh, for employer, small businesses that employ between three and 20 people. You have to be located in an economically vulnerable community. And you have to, um, of course, be financially hurt because of this pandemic. So when you go on the website, you can plug your, your uh, zip code in there to see if you qualify as a economically vulnerable community. I actually put in uh, Brockton's uh, zip code before the call. You are qualified for this. This goes live Monday, 3 o'clock Eastern time. So it, it, it starts noontime Pacific, but it's three o'clock Eastern time. Um, there is a lot of people that are going to apply for this. Uh, there's need across the country. This is a nationwide, um, a nationwide program. So we want you to make sure, be ready, apply right at three o'clock um, on, on Monday when, when it goes live. Um, it's gonna take about 10 minutes. 
to complete. All you're really going to need is your W-9 form. That's the information they're going to be asking for. Uh, grants are going to be awarded on a weekly basis, and, um, but you only need to apply once. So you apply once, you're in the queue, and, and hopefully we'll be able to help. Um, we're, we're trying to help as many businesses as possible. Uh, we couldn't get everybody, as you know, um, but uh, th this is business to business helping, which is really nice at, at this critical time. Um, there's uh, good information on the website. Again, it's savesmallbusiness.com. Uh, we talk about how, uh, what it takes to be uh, a distressed community. Um, there's an index there, it breaks it down, how we came up with the criteria for that. Again, it's, it's $5,000 that you can use towards your business expenses. However, you know your business best, however works out best for you. We'll do a follow-up survey after. We, you know, we're interested to see how the money was spent. But again, you know what's best for your business. If you, if you need it for payroll, if you need it for mortgage payments, um, you, know, you can use that for this. So we're really excited to get the word about, out about this. Um, again, I plugged in the Brockton area. You guys are qualified for this. So if you are a business, um, now this is for businesses. So I do have to say nonprofits, your C3s are not eligible for this. So this is for uh, business to business um, and chambers of commerce are eligible for this if you have between three and 20 employees. That's terrific. Yeah, we will be applying. So thank you for reminding me of that. Yes. Uh, and we also have many, many companies that fall into that category. The majority of our members are, uh, you know, in that three to 20 range. Uh, so that, that's fantastic. We're spreading the word on this. We're posting it on social media. And uh, it's great for the U.S. Chamber to step up and, and do this type of thing, uh, especially because we now have uh, all of those funds from EIDL expended and all of the PPP funds expended. Uh, just a quick um, question while we have you, and we're going to move on to Q&A. Um, Congress is, con is considering another $250 billion. Uh, my understanding is there's a lot of uh, discussion going on right now uh, between uh, the Cong Congress and, uh, and the Senate. Um, what, are you, what are you hearing on your end? I know the U.S. Chamber is right there across the street from the White House. Yes, so we, we've been on top of this. We've been calling for them to, to raise the caps, if you will, pretty much since it started. It was so popular right off, right off the bat. We all knew this was coming. Um, the issue is, and, and I know you have your congressperson coming on next week. Make sure you mention it, hopefully by next week. They've already voted on this and, and the money will, will be coming out. But um, I've yet to meet a congressperson or a senator, and we are on calls constantly with uh, um, members of Congress uh, across the country on this. They all want to raise. They all know how important this is. They all agree they need to put some more money in it, but now we need them to do it. So the issue is because they're not there in Washington right now, everything has to be passed by unanimous consent. So that's what's one of the things that's holding us up. It only takes one senator or one congressman to kind of hold a congressperson to hold this up. So we're hoping Monday they get this done, they come to a compromise. Um, however, I have said all week we were hoping it was going to be Thursday of this week, and now it's Friday, now we're saying Monday. So, um, but uh, we are on top of this. We've been pushing it. Um, we're doing a big thing today on Twitter. Uh, we're trying to get it trending. Uh, safe small businesses, uh, you know, we're calling for Congress to do this today, get the money in there. We need to do it. So uh, look for that as well. We're trying to get the word out. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for the update. Really appreciate the partnership we have with the United States Chamber of Commerce. Uh, our chamber has been members. In fact, we were one of the chambers that formed the U.S. Chamber of Commerce way back uh, almost 106 years ago. That's so, right, your, your uh, name's on the wall at headquarters. So. That's right, that's right. So uh, good to have you with us. Uh, as Steve said, that we do have Congressman Kennedy uh, scheduled to be with us next week at two o'clock. Um, I wanna go to Q&A. There's some Q&A, there's about 15 questions in there. I'm gonna ask the panelists if you can you know, read through those questions, if you can answer them, please do so. There's a section that uh, says you can answer it and then we'll, we'll post the questions and the answers later um you know bob corley rob corley who uh runs neighbor works uh, in brockton uh they are the ones building the building uh it's called the sycamore at main street uh, where uh maine and uh frederick Douglass way meet uh, right in the center of brockton 
uh, that's a five-story building. It's still under construction because uh, it's considered essential uh, services. So construction is going on there and things are moving along very, very nicely. He called me last night and he said, hey, listen, let your folks know on the call that there's $4,000 available uh, for either folks that are renting that can't pay their rent or landlords uh, who possibly have a mortgage payment due uh, that can't um, make the payment. And there is a criteria, you have to um, either have $42,000 in income and be employed, or you can make up $100,000 if you've lost your job, then you're under 42,000 immediately, and they will pay your payment up to $4,000. Uh, they say it's, very, um, it's a very simple uh, process by which to apply and to access these funds. Again, sometimes the landlords now are letting their, their uh, tenants know that this money is available uh, so that they can get paid by their uh, tenants. And other times it's the, uh, the actual landlord who now can't pay their mortgage and maybe have been laid off uh, who are looking for that one-time relief. It's up to $4,000 in one calendar year. And uh, Rob Corley was telling me it's a fairly simple process. We're gonna post that web portal so you can uh, find out more information about that. We we're hoping Rob was going to be on with us, but uh, he was tied up with a, uh, one of his calls. This is federal money, by the way, that's coming in to, to, to uh, do this program. You don't have to be in Brockton. You can be in any town. So uh, that's good information. So Q&A, let's jump to Q&A. Um, panelists, can you see the, the questions? You can. And I see Margaret has joined us, uh, Margaret LaForest uh, from the Mass Office of Business Development. Margaret, you wanna take one of these questions here? Uh, sure. I was actually just looking, um, multitasking here, searching. There was a question in the Q&A about um, federal taxes on the, inc you know, as is the PPP loan going to be considered uh, taxable income? It is not. Um, Sue and I have a series of go to the interim rule, the PPP information sheet for borrowers and the FAQs. So I was Googling just so I uh, searching amongst those docs to be able to copy and paste that into the chat. But I do, can confirm that for you. And I can um, margaret.laforest at mass.gov if that uh, person answering asking that question, I'm happy to copy and paste it. Uh, okay. That's and send call. it over to them so they have it. Yep. And Angie, do you see some questions there for you uh, relative to the SBA? Oh, your microphone is off, Angie. Sorry, Sorry about that. Okay. Um, so I, not a ton that I can answer, to be honest with you. Um, just some of the questions are about pe people who have the locate, uh, applications already in with PPP uh, before the freeze took place. I believe, again, that those are being addressed and processed in a first come, first serve basis. Um, but that is the most that I've heard about it. I can't confirm that that's definitely the case. I don't know if anybody else knows for sure um, if the maximum dollar amount has been reached and they'll be in the queue for when new funding comes, if it comes, or if there's still a chance that they can be approved. Chris, I can, I can piggyback on that for you. So uh, we were just on the call with Secretary Mike Keneally of the Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development and Bob Nelson of the SBA Massachusetts District Director was on that call. And, you know, just on the process side, I think one is different banks are handling things with a different, little bit different process internally. And um, I'll tell you, Chris, this is when every dollar, every member of yours has ever paid to their chamber memberships really comes in as a value add because every bank is always, you know, the banks are always the sponsor of chamber events. Their staff are always present uh, and they're familiar faces. So procedurally, as documentation was provided by the borrower to the bank, the bank then submitted that application into the SBA system. The SBA system, um, it, this is from Bob, it's an instantaneous approval. So if your bank has received authorization for your loan, then you will have a loan number. And um, that loan number is issued against the reserves funds that have been appropriated. So for those who have applied for the PPP loan, call your commercial lender that you're working with and ask them, and this is gonna be a difficult question because there's gonna be some, some disappointing that the loan numbers are not there. 
um, but if they have an authorization, if, they, if their loan has been authorized, now that bank does have 10 days to originate that loan, to fund that loan. So um, I know the banks are very busy. They're getting a lot of these questions, but that is the kind of your process. If you have a PPP, you submitted, you know, where that stands. They were very much talking about reopening the window and Angie did a really great job that the um, advice is now really seek technical assistance, get your PPP documents raring and ready to go. So if that window reopens and authorizes for funding, your bank has all of your information and it's ready to submit. So the EIDL loan, I know Angie addressed that as well as to where that stands. They're hearing 21 to 28 days for approval. You know, they can log into your account, into your SBA account online so you can get an update there if it's posted. They are posting things internally into their site as well as the 800 and the customer service. Uh, I know um, they're doing a lot to uh, improve their diversity as far as language and application processes. And I think we, you know, really learned, and we talked about this right out of the right out of the gate with Procton uh, about the need for the multilingual approach to these, uh, you know, to this process. So um, definitely things that you know, our opportunity now if this window is going to reopen to get prepared and ready and you know we have some great technical assistance partners but calling in there's a Spanish line and so if you do speak Spanish from what I hear that's a shorter wait time so um, I wish that was better answers for you because people really are anxious as rightfully so with getting access to that money and where they are in the pipeline so two different processes with the EIDL um, but new loan applications for EIDL and PPP are not currently being taken, but anticipating additional authorization from Congress for more funds, I would suggest that you get your paperwork ready. And we are happy to, um, Sue had posted Empowering Small Business uh, website, which is giving reference to the different technical assistance. And someone uh, mentioned I don't know if it was Jill Beresford was on this call, <clears throat> the SBDC score and uh, Center for Women Enterprise, they'll help you prepare your application, make sure you have your documentation ready. Can okay. I just add one thing to that as well, Chris? Sure. Um, for those of you who are looking to stay up to date, <clears throat> or trying to post, I know a lot of the chambers are trying to post, but I would always um, advise going out to the mass SBA uh, district office website, sign up for their mailing list so that you get the most recent information and updates from them. They've been pretty good about sending stuff out or following them on Facebook and social media. Um, we've advised a lot of our clients to sign up for their mailing list so they're getting the most recent updates. So if funding is available, they'll be on the mailing list to be able to get those emails as they come out and the new information. And that's the SBA.org? Um, yep. So if you go to the district office, I can put that on the side as well. I'll put the website for the SBA district um, office in Boston. That would be great. If you're not in Massachusetts, whatever state you're in, the local district office should, you know, sign up their mailing list. You're getting the most recent information. Okay, we'll post that and we'll send that out with the thank you uh, email that we send after this is over. I, I see there's quite a few unemployment questions here. I know we tried to tackle uh, a few of them. Uh, we know that the 700 new staff uh, there are uh, working for the state and responding to these questions. So I would suggest that you reach out to them directly as well. Um, but, you know, I, I, we covered some of these questions already in terms of workers not wanting to come back. They, they have to or they lose the 600 a week. Um, you, you, utility under a lot of PPP questions in terms of what's considered uh, ac applicable. I'd have all those numbers ready. Uh, I know people are talking about, you know, insurances, whether that counts and uh, utilities and whether that counts, I believe it does. Uh, I'd have all those numbers ready. So when that, the application is reintroduced, uh, once Congress has approved, hopefully another $250 billion, that you're ready to go and you can fill in all of the slots uh, that you need to, or you can go over it with your bank or your commercial banker. Um, there are, you know, what we're saying is everyone should be working with their local banker. I understand, Tan, I understand Stan, Santander is not issuing any, and, uh, but there are some national banks that are or national organizations. So uh, we will try to post a couple of those uh, just because our local member banks uh, are not taking non 
members at this time or non-banking relationships at this time. So um, we'll, we'll, I know there were a couple talked about yesterday that are taking it nationally and they have an online application portal. So um, locally, any thoughts on that? Has anybody heard of? Yes, Angie, go ahead. Locally, we've heard that Mechanics Cooperative Bank and Bristol County Savings Bank are potentially taking applications. Um, I think they're obviously putting their customers first, but I do believe that they're taking applications in for non uh, non customers as well. Non customers, okay, or from Santander if they need help. Right. Okay. And uh, other other thoughts or questions before we close out, Susan? Yeah, I just wanted to mention one thing that I recall hearing about the SBA debt relief program. So for those folks who have the 504, the 7A, who are wanting to leverage that, if they're on an automatic withdrawal payment system program with the SBA, if that's already something that they have set up, it will not automatically stop those payments. So you have to reach out to your SBA lender and request the stop payments on those um, for that six month period, that it won't automatically do that. That's what I was told by the, oh, one of the SBA reps that you have to manually do that. You have to reach out and request that stop payment. If it's if you're on an automatic withdrawal, okay. So then that's that is true for the seven A loan because there are so many thousands of banks across the country. There is a singular agency, Wells Fargo, that pulls the payments for the five hundred four program. Okay. So if they have a five hundred four loan, it'll be automatic. But under the seven A, you're correct. Each bank has to submit their fifteen hundred two form, which is they're reporting to SBA, and ask for those payments to be made on behalf of their clients. Okay. Yeah. That's very helpful, uh, Susan and Lisa. Thank you. Any last uh, word uh, before we break? We're at pretty much an hour mark, and we did cover a lot of the questions. I will say that Congressman uh, Kennedy will be with us next Friday, and we hope uh, to have the U.S. Chamber back with us, too, uh, maybe next week and the week after. So any last? Thank you, Chris. Thank you once again for all participating, and thank you all for uh, Zooming in, I guess tuning in. Uh, to this call and we hope to have you back next Friday. We'll keep on doing this to provide information to small businesses and such. Uh, it's supposed to be another decent weekend. So please get out there and enjoy some sunshine. Thank Take you. care. Thank you.